This is Dr. David Osser continuing the presentations on major depression with psychotic features or psychotic depression. This is video number two. And in this video, we're going to discuss node one of the algorithm, which is a presentation on ECT for severely ill patients with psychotic depression. The next slide shows the algorithm. It starts with diagnosis, which I discussed in the first unit. And now we're in the first block, which is the first question we ask about this patient once they have been diagnosed with major depression with psychotic features. And that question is, if this is a severely ill patient, have you considered ECT? That's the first node in the algorithm. We want to see if this person is a candidate for ECT. Why do we consider that right away? Because it may be the most effective treatment we have for severe psychotic depression. I make that assertion, but the data is mostly from uncontrolled studies. But I'm going to review those studies to show why we think ECT should be at least considered for first-line use for a more severe case. First, I'll talk about an observational study by Petrides in 2001, a large study where they examined the outcome of bilateral ECT in 253 patients with non-psychotic versus psychotic depression. Using the Hamilton D24 scale, there was 176 non-psychotic patients getting the ECT and 77 psychotic depression cases. The remission rate was 95% in the psychotic depression group, a score of less than 10 on the 24 question Hamilton is considered remission. So 95% remission in the psychotic depression versus 83% in the non-psychotic patients, which is still quite good, but it was statistically significant for the psychotic depression at the P.01 level being more responsive. So this is a line of evidence for our preference for ECT. The other evidence included other observational studies. Perry et al. did a chart review of 14 patients receiving ECT and 12 unmatched patients receiving antidepressants and antipsychotics in combination. But in this comparison, 86% getting the ECT had a good response versus 42% getting the combination therapy. And again, that was statistically significant at the P.05 level. Olson sound ECT is more rapidly effective than pharmacotherapy and shortens hospital stay and reduces treatment costs for inpatients, but only if the ECT is initiated within five days of admission. If you're spending more time than that trying to decide about the ECT or trying other things, then it doesn't shorten the length of stay. But if you get it going right away, it seems to have quite a bit of comprehensive benefit. One study showed that those with psychotic depression had lower relapse rates than those with non-psychotic depression when treated with ECT. The limitations of ECT are well-known, memory impairments, and also availability. Many places don't offer ECT, or it may involve having to transfer them elsewhere, or there are various barriers put up to getting it, or the patient may not want to have it. There's also some work as ECT for maintenance treatment of psychotic depression, which provides further support for thinking of ECT. Navarro did a two-year randomized single-blind study of patients. They were older patients, all over age 60, and they were initially treated with ECT and nortriptyline. So for the acute treatment, they got ECT by frontotemporal three times a week, continued until they either remitted or made no further improvement over three consecutive treatments. And then the comparison group, single-blind, got nortriptyline. And that was dosed to get plasma levels of 80 to 120. The dose typically was 100 milligrams daily. That was the acute treatment. And in maintenance, following them for two years, 16 in the nortriptyline group plus ECT, 17 in the nortriptyline alone group, the ECT group had maintenance treatment once a month, eventually, and the nortriptyline group was continued on their nortriptyline, but they had risperidone added to their nortriptyline to give them an extra benefit. And they had at least six weeks of risperidone, up to two milligrams a day. So what happened? So after two years, 
five of the 16 getting the ECT had a recurrence, and 12 of 17 had a recurrence on the nortriptyline and risperidone. That was significant difference at a P.009 level. So in conclusion, the key points from this section on the ECT is that ECT is a possible first-line treatment for psychotic depression, for severe cases especially. The evidence is from uncontrolled studies, though, for the most part, but it seems to suggest exceptional results. One large sample found a 95% remission rate, and it can work more rapidly than medication and shorten hospital stay if started quickly in the admission. And it may be used as a maintenance therapy and work better than maintaining them on medication. 